So it's getting to that point of the year where it's time to apply for some jobs and seeing as it's, I'm coming to the end of my masters, now it's time to apply for some part two architectural assistant positions. And this reminds me of the kind of the position that I was in two years ago when I was applying for part one jobs straight after my undergraduate degree. But after getting some rejections and lots and lots of those, I thought it's time to kind of make a video on this to kind of just reassure you that it's okay to not get accepted into the, the companies that you want or even the jobs that you want. So welcome back to the channel and I hope this video brings all of you lots and lots of value. I don't know about you, but for me, I've kind of become immune to these sort of responses, these replies that we've been getting. And although we can leave a sour taste and maybe you feel kind of stuck after some time, it's important to continue sending your application out and keep trying. But there's also another aspect of it, which is your mental health and how these setbacks can affect you mentally. But I'm gonna get into that later on in the video, but just to show you that, you know, you're not alone, People all over the world are getting rejected from job applications, but you've got to keep striving, you've got to keep pushing through it, and you will get that position that you love. So let me now like kind of explain to you or like kind of tell you guys some of the challenges that all architecture students or some architecture students may face when applying for jobs. You'll either have employers not reply to you, say thank you so much for the applications, but unfortunately this time you've been unsuccessful. Uh, what else could you what else could happen? Challenges that you may face. Uh, kind of your portfolio might not fit into the kind of the style or the work or the practice that you're applying for and that's also something for you to be conscious about when you do apply for positions do you like the practice or are you just applying for the sake of the job now kind of the kind of the stage that we're at in the world right now with the economic crisis everyone can just apply for the positions and hope to god that they can get them but it's really important for you to be specific as to why you're applying to that practice and why they should hire you instead of someone else and another thing is to kind of preview the steps to bouncing back from application um, projections. Go back to your work. Is there anything that you know yeah, that you could just tell that didn't fit in with that company? Or even when they send you an email to say you've been unsuccessful, send them a reply back and be like, well, thank you so much for considering my application in the first stage. Is there anything that you believe I could tailor or kind of adjust, um, whether it's my work or kind of my experience that would best suit the practice? Should I um, wish to kind of reapply again? And I think kind of having that positive mindset and having that kind of eagerness to, you know, I would love to work for you, um, now kind of tell me what I have to do in order for me to be reconsidered for this position. And I think things like that will help you so much in the long term, but you've got to just keep pushing through. Don't be disheartened by every rejection because every rejection is going to set you up for the next opportunity. So just keep going. So some common reasons as to why architecture job applications might get rejected is, you know, some of the things I've already stated, your portfolio may not suit kind of the work or the style of that practice. But another one that is the most kind of the, how do I say it? Kind of the biggest reason why is there are so many people applying to that one position that you are also applying for. You're gonna be in kind of competition, so to speak, with possibly 50 to 100 kind of, you know, as a minimum, and no, there's no maximum, but as a minimum, you know, like, 30, 50, 100 people are applying for that same role that you are. So you have to bear in mind that the employer is gonna choose the one that they believe is much more suitable for their practice. And then they're gonna you know, shortlist them, invite them in for interviews, but don't be disheartened by it. I know I've said that so many times already in the video at the early stage, but you have to keep applying. Keep looking at the practices that you like and you love the work of and explain to them why you feel like you're gonna be the best suit for them. And another one is offer insights into what recruiters look for in applications. What they're looking for is that your ability and your understanding from your studies and how you can apply them into a real world context. All of the drawings you've done, all of the theoretical thinking, all the, all the kind of work that's related to in real life and contextual things. You need to be able to translate all of your studies into a real life practice. And how can you do that? Well, you can gain internships, you can gain work experience. Whilst you're studying, could you do some work on the side? And if that's not the case, because you know financially you're not able to do that or whatever it may be, can you demonstrate um, all of the things that you've been taught in architecture school and can you develop those over time? So in your summers, can you be working more on the projects? Although they finish and you're not gonna be in kind of contact with the tutors anymore regarding that, can you continue them? Can you develop them? Can you reimagine them? So these are the things that you could do that could bring some much more awareness um, to your kind of resume and your application. Now for me, this next point is extremely important for you guys to kind of take in and understand. And that's to kind of discuss the emotional impact of getting rejected. 
And to kind of give you guys some advice on how you can kind of cope with it and how you can kind of avoid taking these rejections, these job application rejections so personally. As I've already said, there are so many people applying for that same position that you are and you have to understand from, imagine if you got the job, right? How would the others who didn't get it feel and how would you feel about them? You'd probably be like, well, it's a great success for me. I've got the job, I can kind of progress now in my career. But on the other side, and kind of the other side of that is what happens majority of the time is that you are not chosen and your application gets rejected. And it's about you kind of understanding that your, the work that you've done, possibly the experience that you've got so far, it just isn't meeting kind of the level, not the level, so to speak, of the quality, but the level of um, the company and the kind of the experience the company is having right now. You're not the best suit for them. And you need to not take it personally because they're making an, an investment. They're investing so much money into your salary, into the time they're giving to train you, the workshops you're gonna be having, the kind of one-to-one -one experience with your supervisor and architect you'll be working under the team your location things like that you need to understand that they need to think of the logistics before they can even also kind of give an offer to anyone and i know it's going to be hard to take that in when you're like you know even if it's a small practice a medium practice people can understand if it's a large practice and with like huge competition if they're like uh, an internationally known brand but when it comes to other kind of the other aspect of architectural practices and architectural companies you need to not take it personally because at the end of the day there are so many more other companies that you could, you're going to be working for applying for uh, building relationships with so don't even tear them down and don't think that bridges are burned because some of the people that are going to be in those practices you will build relationships with over time whether you see it now or not it's going to be through directly through kind of a, a connection that you've already got or indirectly and it's important to just stay active on your social media, especially when it comes to LinkedIn. Continue putting your work out, continue showing people, you know, essentially what they missed out on. You know, you can continue building up your own kind of self-brand in a way by promoting the projects that you're working on, the work you've done in studios at university, and even some external activities that you're a part of. So don't take it personally. Just think of it as another opportunity for you to push yourself there more. And kind of personal anecdotes and experiences from bouncing back from rejection. I mean, personally, I know this is gonna sound a bit weird, but like, you kind of just get used to the applications getting rejected in my case, from that little clip that I showed you, of, you know, they said that, unfortunately, you've not been selected this time, or due to the high number of applications, we're not able to respond to those who are unsuccessful, things like that, and you know, I guess I'm one of the ones who's been unsuccessful because I've heard their replies, and it's been like, two years from the part one positions that I've applied for and even currently now for the part two architectural assistant positions. So things like that, you just have to be like, okay, great, I've applied, I didn't get it this time, let me now work on kind of creating an amazing final year project that I can put back into my portfolio and should the opportunity arise again, I can reapply for those same practices and hopefully get into one of them. And there's a kind of an analogy that, well, how can I say this in the most so, you know, don't get told off on YouTube, but like, if you keep throwing enough stuff at the wall, eventually some of it will stick, and eventually one, one bit will stick. So just keep going at it, keep being persistent, and keep being determined. Don't let the rejection stop you from applying to more, and don't let the rejection stop you from reapplying again to those same companies. Because they can see your portfolio, and they can see your application, and they may be like, well actually, from the six months before where they applied, I don't think that they were a best suit, but now that they've introduced more work, more projects, and more experience, we actually think we can take this individual on board. So keep going with it. And kind of leading off from that, I think the next part would be to kind of strengthen your application. And how can you do that? Well, if you're at the university, you have the greatest advantage of being surrounded by your peers and tutors. And often at times we take that for granted and we kind of think of university or architecture school as this huge competition that's me against them and you know, it's, it's everyone against everyone, but that's not the case. And I'm hoping that from the previous videos that I've made, you kind of understand that being in studio, being at an architecture school is the greatest opportunity that you can have as a designer in your early stages. And even throughout your career, when you go to practice, you're all a team. So don't think of yourself as just an individual. Think of the qualities that you're bringing and the expertise, but also learn from the knowledge and the skills from others, your peers, but most importantly, your tutors too. So. When it says like how to deal with kind of the rejections and kind of the next step on strengthening your application, I'd say use the community around you, use your peers. Everyone's going to be applying to similar jobs, if not the same jobs as you after you kind of come towards the end of your education. So you have to think of it as a way of 
How have they set up their portfolio? How they set up their CVs? Can I learn anything from the work that they've done that I could maybe tailor and apply to current projects that I'm working on so I can strengthen my portfolio before I send it out again? And also go through your work with your tutors. They've had uh, so many years of experience in practice and they've taught so many students throughout the years and they kind of understand the framework of how they, the work should be set out, what employers will be looking for. Even in your university, you could have some employees um, kind of evenings or some kind of mock interviews where practices or local practices come into the university and they go through your work and they give you tips on, you know, if I was to have an opportunity to interview you, these are the things that I'll be looking for in your portfolio. This is the work that we will be discussing and things like that. So think of it as more of a kind of ongoing kind of process and not just the apply, reject, apply, succeed kind of thing. And I think that's really important for you guys to understand right now. I really hope that this video has helped you guys understand and kind of realize more that rejections aren't a bad thing when it comes to applying for architecture positions. Because as time goes on, you realize, you know, the style of work that I want to be involved in can actually be completely different to the practice that I've applied for. And you have to keep going, keep iterating. Just like the design projects we work on in studio, it's a process. And the process continues and we have to iterate, develop, iterate, develop. And the same has to go on with our CVs, our portfolios, and the practices that we apply for. So don't be disheartened, keep going, stay persistent, and hopefully you'll get the job that you love and it'll work out perfectly. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope I've brought some more value and some kind of support and encouragement for those of you going through it right now, kind of applying for jobs and wishing you guys all the best. Thank you.